in this recording, I want to get across the idea of capacitance. All right, so here we go. Suppose I have a suppose I have a a supply of charge. So this thing right here is just a continuous supply of charge. So I've got Q. And no matter what happens, Q is going to remain on that spot. Separated by a distance, let's call this S, I have another supply of negative charge, negative Q. So later on, we're going to end up calling this <coughs> a battery. But for now, just, you know, I have this continuous supply of both charges. If I take next to that I put a plate a vertical plate All right now remember the plate actually has depth so you just draw that in there okay two conducting plates in there I set them vertically on top of these these charge suppliers well since this is a conductor we know that the positive charge is going to spread itself evenly over that surface and on the inside there the negative and the outside <clears throat> the negative charge is going to spread itself evenly over that surface and then after a time interval of these things charging up i remove i remove the supply what i have now are two charged up plates and between them is going to exist an electric field and we know from class that this electric field assuming the plates are large enough or or your particle in here somewhere that's small enough <coughs> we know that the field is actually constant so e is the electric field that exists between the two of them and we also know from class we, when we did gauss's law and we figured out what this was we figured out exactly what that electric field strength was and if you remember correctly we came up with this. For one of the plates, the electric field strength was sigma over 2 epsilon 0. <clears throat> Since we have a positive plate and a negative plate, that's going to double the strength of the electric field. So we saw in class that this went to sigma over epsilon 0. Just a half plus a half equals the whole, which is what I have there. Let's not forget what sigma actually is. Sigma is Q over A. It's the charge per unit area. <coughs> okay, so now we can proceed. What I'm looking for is this. I want to find a relationship between the voltage difference between two plates. Uh, I don't know why that erased. I want to find a difference between... I want to find a relationship between the voltage of the two plates and the charge that's on the plates. So let's see what we've got. Voltage is fairly easy. I'm going to write it this way. Voltage is fairly easy in this case, since we're assuming the field to be uniform. Voltage is E times S. Um, <clears throat> just doing some basic substitution, what I end up getting is this. That's equal to sigma over epsilon 0 times the distance that they're separated by. Now I'll replace sigma with what it is, and, I, and what I get is voltage is equal to charge over area times epsilon naught times distance. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to manipulate this equation so I have a, a ratio of Q to V. So, in doing that, I get this. I get Q over V. Charge over voltage comes out to be, when you manipulate the other side, you're going to get A over S times epsilon naught. Now, <clears throat> this quantity right here, this is what we call the capacitance. And I think I even spelled it right. So the capacitance, <coughs> excuse me, the capacitance is just a, a look at the ratio of the charge on the plates to the voltage on the plates. And if you notice, that ratio is set equal to this number, and if you look a little bit more closely at this number, epsilon zero is a constant. The area of the plates, once they're, once they're cut, is constant, and the distance that you set them apart is constant. So essentially, this ratio has to end up staying the same. What that tells me is, if I double the charge, 
know, if it's Q over V and I double the charge, then I have to double the voltage to keep that thing the same. And that says that the only thing capacitance is dependent upon is the geometry, the actual shape that you make with the two conducting plates and the field between them. So <clears throat> we've got that for two parallel plate capacitors. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about what they're useful for, you know, where they come into play and where they don't, and I'm going to talk about other capacitors like spherical capacitors and cylindrical capacitors and how you actually calculate their capacitance.